Hi everyone, Frank DeMora here with the End Times Research Ministry, bringing you some news today. There's a lot of news. Uh, this past weekend, there was a lot of activity that were going on, and I want to connect the dots between the warnings in the Bible uh, compared to what we're seeing. Now, what I'm going to be showing you now is almost on a daily occurrence. I've been showing you this kind of news. I've been telling you to watch for more cases of birds, animals, and fish dying. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And so what I'm going to do is just give you the list of the animals, the birds, and the fish that are dying. And I put all the links up at my website that you can go to that you see right here, www.endtimesresearchministry. So you'll have the links You'll be able to go and read each one of these articles for yourself. Now, in order to connect the dots between what Jesus had to say, what the Lord told us in the Old Testament, you'll see that it's highlighted in yellow. And in this scripture, in Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, we see that this is where the Lord shows us that the birds, the animals, and the fish are going to be dying during the last days. Now, Here's some of the news that I did not present to you. I, I took uh, some days off and I posted some information without commentary, but I wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to see this. And you'll see the flags to the left of where this activity is taking place. So in Russia, you had 200,000 pounds of fish that have died. And uh, there, and I said Russia, but it was actually in China. You see that. And then there was a uh, hundred plus elk that uh, died. Now I do have a video, I'm going to play this video for you, so hold on. Biologists are trying to unravel a mystery in northeastern New Mexico. More than a hundred elk found dead on a ranch about 20 miles north of Las Vegas. The news comes as a shock to game and fish investigators and to hunters just days away from hunting season. News 13's Tina Jensen has the story. Sky News 13 flying over a gruesome discovery on the sprawling 75,000 acre Buena Vista Ranch near Mora. A massive die off of more than 100 elk within one square mile. The elk weren't shot, so Game and Fish is investigating just what caused the deaths, which seemed to happen overnight. Their top suspicion? Something called epizootic hemorrhagic disease, or EHD. The often fatal disease is caused by insect bites. An elk could get a fever. Um, it's a, usually a pretty fast illness, and up to 8 to 36 hours later, the animals go into shock and then they die. This is the time of year when it strikes most, when it's hot and elk herds stick together near water. It is more common when it's been very hot. Um, the gnats live in areas with um, standing water. With elk bow hunting season starting on Sunday, some guided expeditions in the area may be called off. Biologists are sending tissue samples from the elk and water samples from the area for testing. If it is EHD, Game and Fish says it's not contagious to humans, and it's not spread from animal to animal. Elk and deer get it from insect bites, which would be good news for bears in the area who are already conducting their own hunt as nature takes its course. Tina Jensen, KRQE News 13. So along with this, keep in mind also that the Lord told us in the last days that he was going to scorch this earth. You could read it in the book of Revelation, the intense uh, intensity from the, the sun. And of course, we do read about droughts and uh, famines also. So all these things are going hand to hand, and they're not happening in an isolated incident. We see that all of the prophecies are taking place at the same time. So let me go back to my site. And move on. You see on August the 28th, it says thousands of fish turn up dead in a pond in Iowa River. So what I'm going to do is for the ones that are not, the news articles that are not translated, because some of them are, uh, you can go and read the translation, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to be showing you the ones that are, are not translated. And here's the article that I was just talking to about, and there's also a video there for you. 
Oh, for the second straight day, extremely hot weather is gripping eastern Iowa. And while we're sweating and crops are wilting, the heat is also affecting Iowa's lakes and rivers. That's a far cry from what the Coralville Lake looked like in June, shortly after the Memorial Day holiday. It's hard to believe that the water was a near three feet from spilling over the emergency spillway then. But August is really drying things out. Cedar Rapids is on pace for the driest August ever. Iowa City is even drier, with less than one-tenth of an inch of rain this month. Dubuque and Waterloo are faring better, but are still well below monthly average rainfall totals. KCRG TV 9's Mark Carlson explains how the dry weather is creating challenges for both humans and wildlife. This is what the Iowa River looked like just three months ago on Memorial Day weekend at Gateway Park in Marengo. And this is the same spot today. The low water levels are creating challenges for fishermen who watched the water drop in recent weeks. I've seen it drop way down at the up over the wall uh, just about in the last three, four, five, six weeks. It just steady went down. The fish aren't biting. Maybe that's because thousands of them are dead. This pond usually connects to the river, but water levels have dropped so low the pond and the fish in it are cut off and slowly suffocating. Now it's a snake-filled pit of fish carcasses. Uh, it looks like most of them is carp that are spawning. And yeah, there's a few uh, crappie in there, a few catfish, but they're just all dying up from lack of oxygen in the water. Downriver, the marsh in northern Johnson County that feeds Coralville Lake is still supplying water to the reservoir, but things are slowing down. The water levels are dropping without rainfall and stuff like that. The water levels up north are dropping, so that's going to reduce the inflows coming into the lake, so we're going to reduce our outflows accordingly. Right now, the lake is actually slightly above the normal summer pool. That's good news for boaters ahead of Labor Day. But officials say because of the wild summer out here, those who head this way this holiday weekend should be ready for anything. We got a different set of hazards now. Uh, where you were maybe boating in uh, 20 feet of water, now might be only a foot of water or two foot of water. So there you have it. There's, again, the Lord's warning about the intensity of the sun com combined with what it's doing to the oxygen, depleting the oxygen in the water, killing fish. Well, here's another article. The drought is causing a duck die-off and a disease in a Klamath Basin marshes drying up. And again, here we have the same situation, a different area, but the same kind of conditions. The drought that has forced irrigation shutoffs at the cattle ranches in the upper Klamath Basin is also causing hardships for the waterfowl and natural, uh, national wildlife refuges in the region. And thousands of ducks are dying from disease called avian botulism on the Toll Lake National Wildlife Refuge near Toll Lake, California due to overcrowded marshes. So again, other news showing us exactly what the Lord told us that we were going to be seeing in the last days. Now here's another uh, video. Warm front that moved through last Sunday is what killed thousands of fish at Lake Kukanusa. Biologist Mike Hensler says at least 10,000 kokanee salmon ingested a blue-green algae, and that was pushed to deeper layers of the reservoir because of strong winds. That algae is toxic to the fish as they're feeding. The salmon become disoriented, come to the surface, and that's where the warmer water eventually kills them. Biologists say the fish were found scattered from Big Creek to the Canadian border, we're told it should only affect a small portion of what would be next year's adult salmon. Now this one I did put up, it was a translation because it showed us uh, there's are different reasons why birds, animals, and people are dying. And this one just happens to be uh, that there was a, uh, a snowfall that killed not only uh, human beings, obviously, but it took a toll on the animals as well. And when you look down here, when you scroll down, you'll see that the, uh, well, let me just read it. It says, to tell the Deputy Minister of the Royal Department, the Victor Hugo uh, Vasquez, the cold weather caused in the, I'm not even sure how you pronounce that, but the loss of at least 2,000 head of livestock, including sheep and camels. So there you have it. The Lord said, Birds, 
animals and humans will be dying in the last days. And the thing about this is, we're seeing these articles, these reports, almost now on a daily basis. If you're following what I'm showing you, uh, this is p popping up in different nations around the world almost on a daily basis. Let me go to another one. Now this says that uh, there is reduction of these cattle, 15% uh, reduction of the cattle. And you see it right here. It says up to 15% of the cattle herd in materials and died because of the drought and the rains that occur at this time are not enough to feed them. So again, hand in hand, intense heat, drought, famine, what does it do? It kills off not only the crops, but it's killing off animals. Now I'm going to put this up here because you're probably wondering why I'm, I'm putting up the bee kill. Well, obviously, if you know what the Lord warns in Revelation 6.6, 6, and before I get to Revelation 6.6, 6, I just want to show you what it says here. It says, just hours after a plane sprayed for mosquitoes over parts of York County Tuesday, beekeepers in the county say that they were already finding dead bees. Now, we've been seeing a lot of information about bees dying by the millions, by the way. In this case, it might have been by the thousands, but or it's estimated 100 to 150 bees. But the, the reason why I'm showing you this kind of news is, let me go back to my site for a second. I'm going to scroll down here and I'll show you that in the book of Revelation, the Lord warned that people were going to have to work all day long for a very small portion of food. You see it says, And I heard the voice in the middle of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. Now, there's going to be a food crisis. We're starting to see that food crisis. It's, it's part of the last day's birth pangs that Christ talked about in Mark 13, 8. And so as the, the food supply dwindles, obviously the cost of the food is going to go through the roof, and many people are going to starve to death uh, as the tribulation gets worse and worse. So how does this affect bees? Well, obviously you need bees to pollinate because the bees without the pollination you're not going to have the, the crops develop you're not going to be able to eat without the pollination and so when you hear news about millions of bees and the bees dwindling you should be paying a, a close attention to what this uh, this news says because in most cases they don't know what's causing the massive kill-off of the bees now in this case they did find out that it was the spraying for mosquitoes that did it. But let's just look at the big picture here. They, it is happening around the world. We're noticing scientists are talking about the dwindling of the bees. And it is definitely going to have effect in the future causing or help causing this food crisis. Now let me scroll up to the top. Bear with me for a second. Here's the scripture if you're brand new to Bible prophecy. And now some of these articles I didn't cover. I didn't give you the videos for them. But just take a look. You have China being affected. 200,000 pounds of fish. The United States. You'll see that, that video that the elk, over 100 elk dead. Thousands of fish turn up in this pond in Iowa. Again, United States. And here we have in Germany, thousands of fish wash ashore. On August the 29th, mass fish kill washes up along the shores river. Where is it? The Yukon. So different places around the world. Again, in the United States, ducks dying due to disease. And here again, August the 30th, 990,000, over 990,000. 981 birds killed during the past few weeks due to avian flu. Different reasons why these animals, birds, and fishes are dying for sure. Here we have 250,000 Appalachians dead in freezing weather, which I showed you a picture of. Mass die-off of penguins. Again, Ukraine. Now, in Germany, you had tons of dead fish wash ashore in the Baltic Sea. 
And again, on the 30th, in a different place, here in France, you had a thousand plus dead fish found in a stream, unusual. And uh, again, if you do the research, you're gonna find out in most of these cases, it's because of the extreme temperatures that are depleting the oxygen, causing the fish to suffocate. 10,000 dead salmon, which I showed you a video of, and the 31st, 70,000 sheep and cattle killed uh, by snow in four regions in Bolivia. And here we have in Paraguay, cattle, 1,500 plus cattle are dead from cold weather. In September the 2nd, thousands of cattle have died due to the drought. And this took place in Mexico. And then again in China, you had thousands of fish found in the river dead and just more causes of uh, or more excuse me more news about these fish dying off so now with that let's bring in what's happened since i took a we had the long weekend here and i did put up some news without a commentary but i just want to show you because i warned you to watch for these big earthquakes that were going to be coming and over the weekend, in the last four days, when I took off, uh, there's, there was definitely a lot of shaking, a lot of activity. And I just want to put it all in one place for you so that you can see what's happening just in the last four or five days. Now, you had a 6.1. You hit Mexico, a 6.2. Also in Mexico, New Zealand had a 6.1. And then there was a round of earthquakes that hit the, uh, in Alaska, you'll see the 7.0, which is a big earthquake. Indonesia, 6.5, 6.1, and Papua New Guinea's 6.0. In Canada, you had a 6.5. In Japan, and of course, anytime you have Japan rocking, it's uh, you really have to pay attention to that, especially because of the Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant that's releasing all kinds of radioactivity into the water and if I saw a news broadcast yesterday that uh, so far there's small amounts of radiation in the fish that they're getting but as the radiation continues to pour into the ocean you're going to find out that they're going to have a lot of fish that are going to be dying from this radioactivity that's pouring in the Pacific Ocean and then there was other Big shocks, 6.5 and a 6.2 hit the islands there in Alaska on September 4th. And keep your eyes on the news, especially if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know it, test his word because he said, watch for what? He said, you're going to see great earthquakes. And then in Matthew 24, 7, he talked that there will be obviously famines, which we're seeing pestilence. Uh, and earthquakes in diverse places, meaning many places, and that's what we're seeing. This is only in a four-day period, or a little bit longer than that, August the 21st to uh, September the 4th. But there's a lot of activity. And let's keep in mind, if the Lord said that the last days would happen as birth pangs, we should expect these things to come faster and faster and get stronger and stronger so the earthquakes will come quicker they will get stronger as well as all of these birds animals and fish that will be dying off and the rest of the prophecies which I'm gonna make a video about today and obviously if you've been watching the news kingdom against kingdom nation and uh, nation against nation which we're seeing wars and rumors of wars and whatnot so a lot of news if you know what to look for, then you'll understand we are definitely in the last days.